Philip. Um, should all brands be brand activists now? I mean, I, I consider myself a marketeer, no? But how do you do brand activism in an authentic way? Is that possible? Yes. Um, to, traditionally, brands have not taken any position on social issues. And that's still the true of the majority of brands. They, have, they don't want to risk their business by taking a stand. Now, there are other brands like uh, Patagonia is a wonderful example of stating your values as a company and assuming that people have the same values and they will like the company so much more for that idea. Now, there's two ways to express your values if you're going to express values as a brand. One is the progressive way. We mean by that that what you're saying is going to be good for the nation, for the society. There's also a thing called regressive uh, brand activism, where you're trying to say things which are not really going to help anyone. In fact, they're only going to help profits rather than help people. So we, in our book on brand activism, talk about how progressive brand activism can stamp a much better image on your reputation and on your company. Now, we want to distinguish that from a simple work where you, what we call maybe CSR, a customer uh, shared value. So we have an exhibit about how we can actually distinguish just being nice as a brand from being really active as a brand. Uh, you may have that exhibit uh, that might show that we have to move toward much more activism, much more sincerity. And by that way, that means once we show our values, we can't let that contradictions occur. If we are accepting a certain practice and value, we can't let other parts of our business do something opposite to that. We must be consistent in the values that we stand for. Some companies may go very light saying, saying something about their values, but we, we must uh, watch out for what is fake values, where they claim a value, but there's nothing they're doing about it, and uh, they're, they're just doing whitewashing, and we don't believe in, in that. Do you think really that the marketeers uh, have the influence to make this transformation a reality in the organization? We have the power. Do we have enough power? Do we have enough skills? Um, yes, I, here's the thing that we have studied and found out. Companies that do good do better financially as well. There's, the evidence is so great that even though doing good may involve a cost, an investment, as we saw with her Patagonia and all of its efforts, what it does is it gets to reach the heart of the customers. It's, it's not a just reaching to the customer's mental side. It gets to their heart, their emotional side, their spirit. And that companies that actually are authentic in caring about the lives of people, they end up being more profitable. So don't be worrying so much about the cost of doing some good recognize that if you're sincere and authentic, it's going to get back to you in, in, in so much of a multiplier. And I'm sure that uh, Patagonia can conf confirm that as an example. And so can Ben and Jerry's and, other, and, and the body shop and all of the others who are exemplifying the caring that I'm talking about. Tell us about the return on investment of your campaigns, because, you know, here we have many marketeers on, you know, they just uh, have to um, uh, care for those yeah. things? Yeah. Um, I think at, um, at a macro level, you know, we would start with the most simplistic return on investment, which would be, did we achieve our goal? Did we protect that landscape or that stand of trees? Or did we um, stop that power plant from being sited or decommission um, that coal-fired 
power plant. So ultimately, if we're thinking about where we're heading to, those would be the goals and the metrics for success. But I understand return on investment. So you know, how, how can we measure these things? And I do have to say we have a brand new platform that I love to just talk about briefly called Patagonia Action Works. And it's giving us some of that data that um, shows us how, to Philip's point, how customers and citizens are reacting to companies that are taking a stand on particular issues, environmental and societal. So we have a new platform that's putting in touch our customers and our employees with local grassroots environmental organizations in their communities working on issues that they care about. And this platform is virtual, but it's meant for people to show up in real time. So on the platform, you can put in your zip code, getting back to that localism piece that I spoke about in my first story. You can put in your zip code and find out which environmental groups are in your neighborhood, when they're having events, what kind of sign-on letters or petition signing do they have happening, rallies, fundraising, um, donating your skills and your, um, and your time through volunteering. And what we're seeing with that return on investment is we can actually show when an environmental group puts it on our platform and we're able to use the communication channels available to us and would be the same for you as that you have as a company, which is oftentimes very different from what an NGO has available to them, we can amplify their, their reach and their message. And they can come back to us and say, we put the petition up and we got 300 times more sign-ons than we ever have in the past. And we can point to your amplification of that. So again, using the tools you have as a company, as a brand, to amplify the messages of the NGO partners or your own environmental campaigns or social campaigns that you're involved in. The first principle of being a successful company is deciding on whether you are in the existing for the benefit of the shareholders only, or you're running your company to be a fountain of good for everyone involved in the company. It's what we call the difference between a shareholder-driven company and a stakeholder-driven company. A stakeholder-driven company cares about not only its customers, not only about its investors, but also about its own, its workers particularly, its distributors, its friends that come from the supply side and the marketing side. In other words, it's a company that believes that teamwork among all the parties that make for success is so important and that the worst cancer in a company is one where it looks like the company only cares about the investors. For the marketeers, uh, brand manager is dead, so long life to brand activists. But let's be brave, let's be humble, and let's be authentic, and good luck. <laughs>